A massive thank you to everyone who supported me with donations for the private prosecution I'm currently pursuing. The response was so overwhelming that I'm still sending out personal thank yous to each and every person. I'll also be emailing a gift to all donators over the coming weeks and updating them with information that may not appear on this channel or my website. If you don't want to receive anything, then I apologise in advance. You can simply unsubscribe from these emails or just let me know that you don't wish to receive them and I'll remove you from the list. But this is currently the only way to show my thanks to everyone who supported me. Regardless of the outcome of this current case, your generosity has enabled me to bring further private prosecutions against police officers who think that they are above the law. I can't guarantee success for everyone I bring, especially when you take into account the deliberate malfeasance by the police, the IOPC, the CPS, the police crime commissioners and the courts in their attempt to obstruct or sabotage these cases. But the fact remains that prosecuting police officers who exceed their authority with criminal intent is the only avenue I can see worth pursuing at this stage. So it's my aim to bring as many prosecutions as possible, especially in relation to high profile cases where the police have escaped accountability. A good instance of that would be Rotherham, where a large number of lower and senior ranking officers of South Yorkshire Police refuse to take action against the wide scale rape and abuse of underage children. None of them have ever been sacked, prosecuted or even disciplined for their part in it. In fact, the IOPC has systematically alerted every accused officer who was investigated so they could leave the force or take early retirement with their full reputation and pensions intact. Some of the stories of police misconduct as it relates to Rotherham are horrifying beyond belief. Take, for instance, how a concerned father alerted the police to the location of his underage daughter who was being sexually abused by a gang inside a derelict house. On arrival, these officers refused to arrest any of the adult males participating in the rape because as far as they were concerned, the 13-year-old girls being passed around were consenting. The fact that no underage child can consent to their own abuse never entered the officers' empty minds. Instead of arresting the rapists, they arrested the underage girls for being drunk and disorderly. Naturally, these officers have never been named or disciplined and no doubt still remain on the force today. If there was any way I could locate the identities of these officers, I'd bring a private prosecution in an instant against them for misconduct in public office, and I wouldn't stop until they're behind bars where they belong. Unfortunately, the IOPC have been on a mission to protect the identities of all officers involved, and they've done an excellent job. If the IOPC excel at anything, it's protecting the police at the cost to the public. Another reason they should be disbanded and splintered into a thousand pieces. But IOPC protection aside, if you are a corrupt police officer, then start running for the hills. Because if I locate you, I assure you, you'll get your just desserts. Better still, why not get in contact with me now and I'll send you a free gift. A length of cord, just long enough so that you can do the decent thing and hang yourselves. This call cost me 20 pence a metre, which is precisely 20 pence more than your worthless existence. As of right now, I'm setting up a new website that will focus on bringing private prosecutions against those that are above the law. I'm also hoping to encourage others to bring prosecutions of their own, particularly against criminals that the police refuse to prosecute for whatever reason. Civil lawsuits aside, it seems to me that Private prosecution is the best way to remedy the ineffectiveness of the police and to tackle crime that actually matters. It's also a good way of ensuring that corrupt officers who exploit their office as a means to further their own lust for power are removed from the force. Who knows, with enough of these prosecutions being brought, maybe the state will think twice about allowing corrupt officers to evade accountability because they know that where they fail to act, somebody out there will do it for them. But prosecution is not the only method I'll be exploring of holding the police to account. There's more than one way to skin a cat and I'll be promoting other methods on the site. I'll also invite people to get proactively involved and hopefully make this more of a group effort. I'm done sitting here just commenting on videos while the police walk away from the damage that they do again and again. 
I want to be more proactive and fortunately the supporters of this channel are giving me the opportunity to be just that. It's fair to say that this channel and the Crime Bodge website have been a perpetual source of embarrassment for the police over the years. No police officer wants the ignominy of being publicly shamed, especially when you take into account how narcissistic many of them are, but embarrassment seems to be the only penalty they pay. It's a good start, but doesn't go far enough. So that I intend to change. So once again, thanks to everyone who's been supporting my work. And please watch this space as it's going to get interesting.